Here we go. All right, example two. I'm only doing three examples. This isn't going to be too bad. I was looking at it to our Wednesday stuff. It's not. The proofs are the hard part, but using it's not too bad. All right. Um, tangent squared theta times 1 plus cotangent squared theta equals 1 over 1 minus sine squared theta. All right, I'm looking for brilliant ideas. <coughs> Nobody can't cross the line. Kyle. Um, I'm just saying that right off the bat, you just change the one plus cotangent squared that can change. Okay, so one, you're saying that right here on the Pythagorean identities on the back of our sheet, it says one plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared, which is right here. So, good idea. So, let's change that to secant squared, no wait, cosecant? Cosecant co squared. One minus sine squared equals cosine squared, that's on the front side here. One minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared, so I'm gonna make this one over cosine squared theta. All right. Who else has an idea of something we can do next? Morgan. Okay, so how do I write tangent squared, though? Y squared over X squared, good, times cosecant is what? 1 over Y squared. One over cosine squared is one over x squared. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. Whereas Tanner says, "Oh my gosh, you can cancel them out. Might as well just quit it. Quit right now. Don't even write the end of it." Yep. QED. Boom. Which, by the way, is technically uh, uh, secant squared equals secant squared. Okay. Now, did anybody know this proof from top to bottom when we started? No. That's what proof writing is. You just kind of have to go on the fly. You have to start being like, well, let's try this for a while. And then all of a sudden you have a moment like Tanner does where you're like, oh, and then obviously it cancels out. We've got it. You know, like... And I'm guessing everybody was also kind of hitting that same point that Tanner was at the same point, except for Tanner was louder. Yeah? Are we going to have someone, like, do, even if you do simplify it, like, it won't help it at all? Okay, so, yes. Or, like, when should you simplify and when should you not? Or should you just... Right now, simplify anytime that you're getting stuck. Anytime you see something like this, 1 plus cotangent squared, you could actually do this whole problem using just x's and y's, but it would be a lot of common denominators. It gets very messy. It's way easier if you see a formula, use it. It'll save you some time. Um, almost always simplifying does work. There are a few instances where it doesn't, which we'll get into a little bit more tomorrow, but today it will. Okay? All right, example three. Is this nice? Easing you in? Like a warm bath, huh? Not so bad. Math isn't so bad. Probably not going to be horrible in a couple of days. No. Probably going to be fine. Are you excited about the story, though? Yeah. Slightly interested in how I met Bo. Any guesses? At a party. Clown College. That's where we both went to. Clown? Clown. Did I? Possibly. About Clown College? No. About the party? Mm -hmm. I didn't actually go to Clown College. That was a joke. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Was it the party story you're thinking of? Uh, 
I thought I remember you telling me. Was there a water gun involved? I don't remember. Well, then you haven't heard that story. I think it's so funny we actually believed the compound. <laughs> Did you really? No, you didn't. I, like, we didn't believe it, but like, it's so oh. I actually remember, uh, so when I was in high school, we had, we had those, uh, you would take like a, um, what do you call it, a test where you would try to investigate like a career, and they'd be like, we, you know, here's your personality test, you're going to take like 60 questions, and here's some like things that might be helpful to you, you know, like maybe you want to try this career, and no joke, I took like a 60, 80 question test. And they gave me the careers that might work for me, and the very top one was clown. <laughs> I was like, cool. Thank you. That was very helpful. Yep. Okay, just quick, really quick. Last year, we were able to go an entire class on top of our skeleton and courage. Like, we basically got a lecture just asking them questions. About his marriage? Yeah, like how he proposed. Wow. Like, like, was it romantic? Yeah. Anybody? Ooh, a bridge, not a garage on a beer box, no? It was like the length of a bike trail. Aw. I wouldn't change mine, though. It was cool. And then when they got there, then he, like, proposed whatever. And apparently, um, whatever his wife's name is, I don't know. Uh, she it's a great story. Go. Didn't want to go to the location? She didn't want to go on a bike ride. Like getting late. Oh. But Thorson's like, come on, you gotta go. <laughs> there might be something over there. <laughs> it's fun. Okay, let's get going on this. So, uh, ideas. Jackson. Um, for like the negative cotangent, you can switch it to like the plus cotangent and negative theta. Right? No. I'm looking at the even odd identities. I don't know That's not really going to help. To switch anything <laughs> to these negative thetas isn't going to help because they all have to be in negative theta then, and then we'd have to switch all of them, which would just make it more messy. So okay. no thanks on that one. Um, I'm just going to just turn it into x and y <laughs> right away. And then okay. Yep. <laughs> okay, what's next? Well, it's been multiplied the denominator of yx times x over y. Or that x over y. y over x times x over y. Oh, okay. So you're saying that, like, we want a common denominator on top here, and we're going to make our common denominator x, y? No, you have to do it to both of them. Okay, let's try that, though. Let's find a common denominator. I like the idea of a common denominator. If we have x and y, then our common denominator is x, y. So if I multiply by a y on the bottom here, the top becomes y squared. And here, if I have to multiply by an x, that becomes x squared on top. No, it isn't. Nope. So we've got y squared minus x squared over xy. I'm going to change it like this and change it into, uh, can we do a times here? So normally I would divide by, I don't know if I'm doing too many steps at once. I would divide by xy. But instead, I'm going to times by 1 over xy. Is that too many steps at once? Hmm. Now what? Multiply on this side, across. Okay, so that would be y squared minus x squared over xy times xy is x squared y squared. Why did you do the times 
because I was dividing by x, y over 1. So this was y squared over x, y minus x squared over y, x time or divided by that. Right? And so I just changed it to a times and then flipped it right here. So like this is this, right? And that is that. And then because I'm dividing fractions, I can change that to a multiply and flip the second one. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I should have probably listed that out. Okay, well, I feel like we've, we've tackled the left side for a while. Let's, maybe we, we want to work on the right. Oh, I think so. That's the left side. Okay, what do you think? This might seem crazy, but... Whoa. If you put in the y squared over x squared, y squared, and you just pull out the y squared, can you see That's true, but then we'll get kind of back... Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> I'm not minding it. All right, let's try it. So he's saying, like, if we split it up like this, 